Hello and welcome to Model Train Fun. My name is Bo Jensen and today we are going to look at how to uh, connect uh, non merklin signals to the uh, M84 decoder. So um, in order to do that I'm using uh, two different signals. Yes, the boxes are actually empty here. Uh, so one is the Feastman uh, 4012 which is a home entry signal which is a three aspect signal and the other signal I'm going to look at is the Feastman uh, 40 uh, one tree, which is a four aspect signal or a home exit signal. Now I got the um, home entry signal here. So as you can see, it's basically just a simple uh, signal with some built in LEDs and a bunch of wires. Now in order to connect this to the central station tree or the mobile station two, we need a decoder and that's why we connect it to the M84. Now uh, this video is actually the second part uh, of a two-part series where I actually uh, showed the first video uh, all the way back in uh, February. And then I got a little tired of uh, playing uh, with the M84, so I'm sorry about that. So uh, today we're going to look at how to connect it. However, you need to look at two videos in order to make sure you understand all the details in this video. So the first video is the beginner's episode uh, uh, 8C, uh, which is the one where we take the M84 and we program it so it's ready to connect uh, these signals, the three and four way signals to the CS3 or MS2. Um, the other video that's useful for you is the beginner's episode 8A, which uh, uh, looks at how to install the M84 and how to troubleshoot the M84 as well. I will link uh, both of these videos uh, in the uh, description uh, below. In addition to that, in order to actually uh, make the signals work appropriately, you need to buy uh, some diodes. Um, diodes are actually pretty cheap, uh, so the specific ones I use, you see I get here a bag of 100 diodes uh, to connect to it. Uh, very cheap. Honestly, I don't even remember what it cost, but the postage was more expensive than actually the diodes themselves. You need to take those and you need to solder those on the um, appropriate wires. So you need to use a soldering iron. So please be careful and follow all safety instruction uh, when you're doing this. Enjoy the video. Let's uh, unbox uh, this signal. So this signal is a Feastman uh, 4012, which is a three-way signal. So it has a stop, a proceed, and a proceed slowly. So you can see here it has uh, three LEDs. If we look on the back side, it can be powered by using AC, DC, but also the uh, track power. So um, let's see uh, what's in the box. Oh. Try and con it out here. Oh, I feel something falling out here behind. So we got the uh, the manual here. Okay. Then we got some stickers that can be put on the signal in order to uh, number the signal. And then we got what is this one here? I think this is safety instructions. Yes, indeed it is. Yes, safety instructions. Then we have the uh, signal itself. We have it here. Let's see if we can get it out. I um, Oh, we got all the wires here on the other side. All right. It looks like I have to untie the knot and get it uh, out. I'll do that uh, off camera. But it's a nice signal here. And we can see here how many wires are there. There is a total of uh, four wires is what we would expect it. So there's a blue uh, return here and then uh, red, green and yellow, which we would need for stop, proceed and proceed slowly. Before we get started, uh, let's uh, get uh, familiar with the uh, signal. It's always a good thing to try it out. Um, so I uh, suppose we have a black return and then we have uh, one uh, for each color of the LEDs. Um, if I remember right from uh, the previous episode where we were playing with the uh, Feastman signals, 
then the uh, black actually goes into the red on DC. So remember DC, since there's a diode here, you can see there's a diode uh, and it's LEDs. It's important that it uh, gets uh, power the correct way around. Uh, when it's AC, it's uh, less critical. So let's just say here is the uh, red. Let me just see here. And then uh, we'll try and connect the wires uh, one by one. Uh, what's the first one I got here? I got the red one here. You see when I put the red one in, the black, I get a red light. I got a green one here. Let's try and put it in. Then we get a green light, what we would expect. I have a yellow and we put that one in here and we got a yellow light. So it's always a good thing to test your uh, signals before you start installing. So you both can see that they work, but also so you figure out how uh, to wire it up afterwards. Now let's have a look at the signal. So this signal is uh, the uh, Feastman uh, 4013, which is an exit signal with the uh, six uh, LEDs. Uh, this one uh, has a stop, uh, which is red, green, which is proceed, and then yellow, which is proceed slowly, but also the white uh, to indicate the switching. So let's uh, try and uh, con this one out of its box. We'll see what's inside. Okay. What do we have? Oh, not everything came out of the box. We have the uh, operating manual. Okay. We got the uh, safety instructions in here as well. Yes, safety instructions. I believe there's supposed to be some stickers somewhere as well you can uh, put on in order to number. Oh, we got them here. So here we got the stickers for the signal. Then we got the uh, signal itself here with all the uh, LEDs. Okay. And then underneath here we have a lot of wires. It looks like we got a wire for each LED basically. Well, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six are there here. So I guess I'll have to figure out how uh, this one works. Not entirely sure. I guess uh, we'll have to test it out. Now let's uh, get to know the uh, home exit signal. Uh, remember, we had a bunch of wires in there. Uh, but let's, uh, before we uh, look at um, the wires, look at uh, what are we supposed to get. So I hope you can see this. So this is stop. We got the uh, departure signal or the home exit here. It's a little difficult to see, but you could see when it's uh, stop, it actually two reds. When it's, uh, when it's um, green or Proceed, there's actually one green, so that's the one up here in the corner, hard to see. Then there's the slow speed here, that's the yellow, so that's the one we got down here. And then here, when uh, we uh, will allow shunting, you see it says stop plus shunting allowed. You can see one of the red is actually uh, uh, red, and then the two whites here. So that will probably explain why there's a couple of red wires in there. Um, let's uh, look at the wires. So we got a black wire, which is a return. I got one red here. I got another red there. Then I got the white, probably two both whites, a yellow and a green. Um, as with the other signals, I would assume that the black goes into the, um, into the red. So we do that. And then let's just try and uh, take the wires uh, one at a time. So I will start with, what do I have here? I got, a, I got a green wire here. So let's start with the green wire. When we have that one in, indeed, that's the green. Then we have a yellow here. Okay. So let's put the uh, yellow in. Okay. We see that's the yellow down there. Excellent. Um, then we have the two reds. Um, remember when we have a full stop, both of the reds need to be uh, red, but when it's shunting, only one of them needs to be. 
So let's try and put in one of the reds here. And you can see that's uh, the red there to the uh, right. And then we'll put the other red in, okay? And then you see it's the red to the left, and it's actually the left that needs to be in the shunting mode. And then finally, we got the white here. Okay, let's try and put that in. We put that into the black here. Okay, and let's see what we get. And then we actually get the two white ones here. So it actually pretty much fits uh, with uh, the aspects we need, right? We need uh, uh, the two reds for when it's red, uh, one red and the white for when it's uh, stop and shunting, and then we need a green for proceed and yellow for proceed slowly. Let's uh, first have a look at uh, a small recap of how to program the uh, M84. Um, you can see the full story in the beginner episode 8C. I will include a link uh, in the uh, description uh, below. Now, it doesn't matter whether or not it's the uh, black or the white edition of the uh, M84. It actually uh, happens in the same way. So the first thing we do is make sure the power is off. Uh, we set the uh, address format uh, to uh, DCC. Uh, so that's on the uh, uh, pin 10. And then we go in and then we program the uh, um, address. In this case, we've chosen address 9 to 12. So we program that in uh, in the little uh, dip switch. So we set the dip switch 1 and 2 to on. Uh, and then we uh, actually uh, connect the power. Or I should say we connect the wires. We haven't turned it on yet. Because first we want to look at uh, how do we actually want to connect the uh, signals uh, to the uh, M84. So remember this cheat sheet here uh, from the programming video of the uh, M84. So depending on how we want to do it, we have uh, three different set of values, uh, CV values we can program. I want to put the home entry uh, on uh, address uh, 9 and 10. Uh, so the first two connectors here, or connector 1 and 2. Uh, and then I want to put the home exit on uh, address 11 and 12, which is connector 3 and 4. So what does that mean? It means we need to use uh, these two sets of CVs, and those are the CVs we need to program into the M84. Now, how do we do this uh, um, programming. So let's uh, first look at the central station 3 and then we'll look at the recap of the mobile station 2. Um, the first thing we do is we put it on the programming track so we move the uh, power to the track uh, then we turn it on um, and then uh, remember that the uh, address was set uh, for 9 so we make uh, one um, accessory that's basically uh, on address 9 and then we can go ahead and um, do the reconfiguration. You might want to reset it, and you do that by setting CV8 to 8, and then you put in the values uh, that we determined on the previous uh, page that we wanted to uh, program. So basically, uh, connector 1, 2, that's where we want to put the Feastman uh, uh, 4012, which is the home entry signal, and on connector 3, 4, that's where we want to put the Feastman uh, 4013, which is the uh, uh, home exit signal. Um, do remember, though, that um, some things have changed. If you're using the latest version of the CS3, so the version 2.4.0, I think it's uh, dash or in parenthesis 5. Um, in the video, I actually showed it where it automatically loads the CV values. If you have the latest version here, you need to click on the CVs before it reads the values, or you can use the burger menu to read out uh, all the decoder values by hitting read out decoder. Um, then um, when everything is programmed, you can turn it off again. You can set the address format back to Macklin. You could also keep it on DCC if you prefer. And then you uh, need to switch the uh, power to the track back to the main. The next thing you need to do is, um, and here it depends on whether or not you got the black uh, edition or the white edition. Because if you got the black edition, you can set the address to blank again to so put all the dip switch on uh, off. You can turn it on 
you can discover MFX, you can say get a new address in this case because it's blank, and then you will basically have your uh, four um, accessories automatically being loaded by the CS3. Now if you have the uh, white edition, then you uh, turn it on, and then you need to create each of these manually, so each of the accessories manually, and remember to set them to the uh, correct address, and then you can use them after that. Now, if you have the mobile station 2, um, what you do is you power it on, you uh, make a new locomotive that's in uh, DCC. Remember, you still have to put the M84 in DCC mode. Uh, then you set the uh, address of this new locomotive to the address you uh, set for the M84. So in the example here, it's address 9. And then you can go in under configure or loco, you can basically go ahead and program the CVs, and then you have to enter all of these uh, CV values uh, as we did on the CS3. So for connector 1, 2 for the home entry signal, and connector 3, 4 for the home exit signal. When that is done, you can power it off, you can set it back into a Macklin format, you can power it on again, and when you've done that, then you can basically just go in and use the keyboard. So here I've shown address 9 and 10, which would be the home entry signal. Now let's uh, look at how you connect signals uh, to the uh, M84, such that it, uh, it can be used with the CS3. Now in truth, um, for the MS2, you could connect it however you like. Uh, however, if you do it uh, the same way, then you'll follow the uh, guidelines and recommendations uh, of Merklin. So, if we have a home block signal uh, in the CS3, uh, choose the icon uh, HP0 slash 1 uh, scale. There's also one called just HP0 slash 1. Uh, you can also use that one, but if you use the scale versions of all the icons, it will work for all the signals. So you choose this one, uh, then you have the signal. And in essence, if you have a connector on the uh, M84, in this case I've shown it as the first connector, so on the first connector, on the red there, that will be equivalent to stop, and on the green would be uh, equivalent uh, to proceed. So you would do this if you have a home block signal, which only has the two aspects of stop and proceed. Now, what if you have a home entry signal? Uh, it has uh, three aspects. Uh, in the CS3, choose the one called HP0 uh, slash 1 slash 2 scale. Um, and then uh, you actually uh, remember when you have the home entry, you need uh, two addresses. So in this case here, I've shown it as the M84 on the connector 1 and connector 2. Remember in this video, we set the M84 to address 9, so it means connector 1 is address 9 and connector 2 is address 10. So how do we do it? Well, the uh, red on the 1 is still red as we had with the home block. Um, and the same thing for the green on connector 1, that's still green. And uh, now on address 2, the green there will actually be the slow or the proceed slowly. If we carry on to the home exit signal, here choose the one called HP0 slash 1 slash 2 plus SH0 slash 1 scale uh, on the CS3. And now you've got four aspects, as you can see. Again, you need uh, four uh, or two addresses because you need uh, four inputs. Here I've shown it as connecting to the M84 on uh, connector uh, 3 and 4, which means uh, in our case, as the example video here, the M84 is address 9. That means address 3 will be address, or connector 3 will be address 11, and connector 4 will be con uh, address 12. How do we do it? Again, on the first connector, the red is the red, the green is the green. Uh, on the um, uh, second uh, connector, again, the green here is the yellow, just as the home entry. And then uh, the uh, red uh, on the second connector, in this case, uh, connector 4, is actually the one that indicates uh, uh, stop or switching allowed.
Now let's uh, look at how we uh, connect the uh, Feastman uh, 4012, so the home entry signal we have. Uh, so we got uh, four wires, a red, a green, a yellow, and a black. So the first thing is we connect the black. And uh, now here it depends on what uh, kind of power you have. If you have DC power, you connect the, um, the black to the uh, plus on the DC or the red. If you have AC, then you can connect uh, to uh, any of the wires. It really doesn't matter. If you're using a uh, Merklin uh, color scheme, then it's the brown. If you're using track power, then you can uh, connect it uh, to the brown as well. Uh, the other side, so remember the, the black wire goes directly into the power supply. However, the other uh, phase of the power supply goes into the center of the M84. So I indicated here, you can see it kind of goes in where it says one and two. So remember the connector on the M84 has a green, a center, and the red. Uh, so in this case, the, uh, you have to connect the center. So you can connect uh, all the centers if you like, or if it's different power supplies, then connect them individually and directly to the power supply. So in this case, um, the uh, center, if it's DC, uh, goes to the minus or to the black. If it's AC, it can really go to any, but if you use the uh, Merklin color scheme, it goes to the yellow, and if it goes to track power, it goes to the red. Now, uh, each of the wires we have on the signal, we basically just connect them and then it actually fits. So the, the red goes to the red on the first uh, connector, the green goes to green on the second or on the first connector as well. And then we have to remember the yellow goes on the green on the second connector, as we talked about previously. Um, now, the other thing we want to do is if uh, we um, have the uh, proceed slowly, which would be equivalent to the green on the second connector, uh, we also want the green light to turn on. So we actually uh, also make sure that the green uh, wire goes uh, to the green on the second connector. However, now we effectively short-circuited uh, the green and the yellow wire. So what actually happens? Well, if we look at the current flow, and now I'm going to describe the current flow as conventional flow going from the plus to the minus. So what we'll see is the uh, electricity will flow down here from the red box. It will go in through the black wire, in through the uh, signal. Then it will come through the wires here, uh, either the uh, red, the green, or the yellow. And then it will go into the M84 on one of the connectors and then it will come out the center of the connector and then go back to the power supply here. So if we look at this, if, oh, by the way, don't forget, I am describing this as a current flow in, let's say, DC terms where you understand it going from plus to minus. The interesting thing is there's a special diode. You actually see it here on the black. Uh, so this diode, in combination with the LEDs, which are also diodes in the signal, it actually makes the AC power or track power kind of behave like the DC. So when we're going through this thought experiment of how the um, current flows, you can it, it also applies for that. So um, let's try first and uh, make the stop work. In order to do the stop, what do we do? Well, we uh, turn on connector one red. So that's this one. As soon as we turn that on, the uh, current will actually flow from the black wire through the signal, out through the red wire, into the connector here, out through the middle and over to the power supply. So in this fashion, we'll have the red light actually lighting up as we actually want it. Excellent. Now let's look at the um, proceed slowly. In order to do the proceed slowly, we turn on the second connector, the green. So we turn on this one down there. As soon as we do that, the current flow will go through the signal, come out through the yellow wire, and then go to the connector here and go out to the green. But not only that, you'll actually also have the current flowing through the green wire to the same connector. So we actually get what we wanted to. We get the flow both through the green wire and the yellow wire, which means on our signal, we will actually see both the yellow and the green turning on.
Most excellent. Now, the last one is the green. So what happens when we turn on the green? Well, the green is the green on connector one. So we turn that one on. Uh, the current will actually flow through the signal, come out the green wire and go to the green connection here. However, the, since we short circuited uh, the yellow and the green wire, the current can also flow through the yellow wire, come over to here. And you see these two wires go into the same connector, which basically means they're connected. So it can run back through this wire and out through the green. So actually what we have done when we short circuit it is make sure that, uh, that they always will light together. However, that's not really what we want. When we choose uh, proceed, we do not want the yellow uh, lamp to go on in the signal as well. So how do we do that? Well, we put a block in here. It's actually a one-way block. It's what's called a diode in uh, electronics. So basically what a diode does is it makes sure that the power can run uh, one way. So in this case, it can run from the green wire to if we had uh, the uh, yellow uh, or the proceed slowly, so the green on connector two turned on, it can still run down there, but it will prevent the current from the yellow wire to run in here and then go backwards here. So think of this, um, the line here as kind of a block. If you hit the, the line without the arrow, then you're blocked and cannot go that way. However, if you come from the other direction, it's okay to go through. So this actually means now when we turn on the green uh, or the green on uh, connector one, then it will only be the green that lights up in the signal. So now what is this diode? Well, the diode uh, that is recommended is uh, the one here. Oh, oops. It's the one here called 1N4007, uh, uh, which is actually uh, can do up to a thousand volt current uh, and one amp. And uh, one amp should be uh, plenty, especially if you are using LED signals. Even for signal signals with light bulbs, uh, that should be plenty. If it's not enough for you, you can also choose uh, one that can support 3 amps. By the way, the one that's the 1 amp here, you can go and buy this uh, on the internet or in an electronic store, uh, but you can also buy it in your model train store. Feastman actually has it as the Feastman 6834. If we look at the diode, it's... Um, Typically, the uh, 1N4007 is black, and then you can see there's kind of a silver marking on one end. That actually uh, matches the door. So if you come through uh, this one here, uh, then uh, the arrow will allow you to go this way, but it will not allow you uh, to go the other way. So if you have to place it uh, on the, um, or, or if you have to use it, this one here is actually the direction it blocks. So we'll block if it comes here from the right going towards the left, and it will allow current to come from the left going to the right. Let's uh, first look at uh, how we make the home entry signal on the uh, CS3. Uh, I'm not gonna illustrate anything uh, for the MS2 because remember you can look in the uh, previous uh, video uh, about the M84 where we programmed it. Uh, so there's a link uh, below to that video, uh, which is uh, the video in the uh, beginner episode 8C. Now, how do we uh, create it? Well, we go into edit um, and then we uh, choose edit article list uh, in here. Now, if we don't have the uh, MFX edition of the M84, uh, then uh, we have to create it manually. So I go in here, I choose the plus. And you see down here at the bottom, it says uh, S1 and it says address 7. Remember, it was address 9 we wanted on. So the uh, M84 right now is on address 9. So uh, we go in and we can uh, delete the 7 and we can put in a 9 instead. So now it has address 9. I typically uh, give the signal uh, the... Uh, uh, the number of the address. So this is S9 for a signal on address 9. And now I can, um, you can see here, I got a bunch of choices here where I can choose how it looks. 
uh, but none of the ones I want. So you go to the light signals, and here, remember, as I said before, you need the scale editions of these. So the first one here basically has two aspects, that's the home block. This one has three aspects, that's the uh, home um, entry signal. So we choose that one, and now we basically got it. Um, and then we can uh, place uh, the signal on the track board so we can play with it. Now, if you have the uh, M84 that uh, supports MFX, uh, then you just discover MFX, and you see I have it here. So here I got the uh, M84. You see I can click on it, and you can see it's address 9. Now, don't uh, forget that when it's MFX, you really don't care about addresses anymore. You just want to know that there's four ports here, and you can see it automatically uh, put that in afterwards. Uh, the first first port is connector 1, the second one is connector 2, and so on. So in truth, you don't care about the address. The address just happens to be 9. Uh, I made sure of that uh, when I uh, imported it uh, using MFX. Now, how do I get the first two ports uh, to become a signal? Well, you basically just click on the first port here. You do the same as uh, before. You go to the light signal. You make sure you choose the scale editions here. And then uh, what you do is you click on, we want here the uh, home entry signal, which has three aspects. So we click on this one. And if you noticed, uh, two of the ports here on the MFX uh, device, so on the M84 MFX, actually disappeared. And it actually uh, congested into one. So now you see there's one signal here. Uh, a, and it's called A1. There was also an A2, but that disappeared and is uh, now only A1. So we can give it uh, an appropriate uh, name. I'm going to call it S9 again, because it actually is on address 9, but you can give it any name. So uh, for the uh, home entry signal, um, the only thing we really need to do here is we need to connect the uh, red wire uh, to the uh, red on connector 1, the green wire to uh, the green on connector 1. We also want the green wire connected through a diode uh, to the green on connector 2. And we want the yellow uh, connected uh, to uh, the uh, green on connector 2 as well. And then we uh, hook up uh, the uh, black wire and the center connectors as well. So let's see how that looks in real life. So here I have uh, connected the uh, block um, entry signal here uh, to the M84. So if you look at it, you see the uh, red wire from the signal goes into the red on connector 1. The green wire here goes into the green on connector 1. The yellow here actually goes over and goes to the black uh, on, in this case, I have DC power. And when we're over here, you can see the uh, black wire goes uh, into the red. Uh, the final two wires I need is I need a connection uh, also from the center of connector 2. It goes back and over to the power supply on black. Now remember here, you might as well, you could also just have uh, connected uh, uh, this connector over directly to this. It doesn't need to run all the way back to the power supply. It's just because I got short wires, so it was easy. In addition to that, I got the yellow here that goes into the green on uh, connector 2. Um, now one thing uh, you have to uh, keep in mind, uh, so if you look at the CS3 now, it is actually red that's chosen, and it is also red we have here uh, on the signal. It might actually come up differently first time and not uh, be in sync till you choose the first time. So let me try and um, change uh, on the CS3. So in this case, I'm going to go over to um, to the uh, green, and you see when it's the green, you see over here, it's connector one green, and you can barely perhaps see there, see it on the uh, video, but the green uh, LED is on there, and you see the signal here also uh, turn green, which is exactly what we wanted. Now we can uh, go ahead and choose uh, yellow on the CS3, and now you can see it turns yellow here, but the green is not on because I haven't uh, added any diode yet. But you see it's connector 2 green, so it's the yellow. However, I unfortunately don't have my green. So what do we do? Well, 
let me uh, try and uh, take a diode. So we got a diode here. You see this is the end uh, that blocks. So if current comes from this side over here to the right, it cannot flow to the left. So we want to put that down uh, actually exactly as you see here and connect between the two wires. So now I'm just going to connect it and you can see here while I hold this one on, I'm just going to let it drop down on these wires. You see there's a loose connection, um, but if you wriggled it a lit, little, you see now the green is actually on. Uh, of course, I just put it on loosely. You'll have to actually solder it in place and then you get what you want. So now just to be sure, let's go back to the green on the signal and make sure only the green is on. And you can see only the green is on, the yellow is not on. So that means the diode has actually been put on correctly, even though I just loosely put it on. You see, it's just laying there between the green wire here and the yellow wire, and it's blocking such that uh, the yellow cannot run over to the green connector here. Now, how do we uh, create the uh, home exit signal uh, inside the CS3? Well, again, we go to the edit, edit article list. Um, now, if we have the uh, non-MFX edition, uh, we basically create a new signal. Now, remember, this one is on connector 3 and 4. The M84 is set uh, for address 9. So connector 1 is 9, connector 2 is uh, 10, connector 3 is uh, 11 so i want uh, my signal now on address 11 so we uh, remember to change uh, the address here at the bottom i uh, give it an appropriate name so i'm gonna call it s11 for signal at address 11 and now we need to make sure the signal looks correct so we uh, click on the light signals tab here and then remember we need the scale versions uh, but now it's the home exit signal, so it's the one called HP012 and then SH01, so it's the four aspect one, so we choose this one. And now we have the signal here ready to use. Now if we uh, have the uh, MFX uh, edition of the M84, uh, then remember before we basically just went in and changed uh, the first port. So you see I still have that one here as the home entry. Now we need the home exit on uh, connector 3 and 4. So I basically choose uh, connector 3. I go to the light signals. You see I'm already on the light signals tab. And then I choose the appropriate home exit. So that's the one uh, zero, HP012 zero, and SH01 scale. Remember it has to be the scale version. Uh, and if you uh, look closely, you will see that it uh, automatically converts uh, the two connectors into one and you see that as soon as I clicked it so now we have the uh, exit signal here oh I, it looks like I did the naming uh, incorrectly here so let me go back this one here I wanted to call S9 because it's actually the signal on address 9 this one here now is a signal uh, on address 11 so we call that S11 excellent now uh, let's look at how we uh, connect the home exit signal. So this is the Feastman uh, 4013 we've been looking at uh, all along in the video. So how do we actually connect that one? Well, uh, remember from when we tested it before, it has two uh, red wires, uh, one green, one white, one yellow, and one black. Uh, so the red wires, um, one goes to the... Uh, to, uh, if we look at it over here on the signal, one uh, lights up the red to the left and one lights up the red uh, to the right. Now you can do a lot of uh, experimentation here. Um, so I'm not going to go through how the current flow is. I'm just going to show you where to uh, put in the diodes. So basically the right, uh, that uh, can go straight into uh, the right uh, red, can go straight into a uh, connector red on the uh, or the red connector on connector one, while the left one, if you look at it here, if you look at the stop versus as, uh, the uh, other one where it shows stop and switching allowed, that one will also have to be turned on. 
uh, and that's actually the red on connector two. So it's actually connected to the red on connector two through a diode, and then there's a diode here where it connects to the red, such that the uh, right red cannot run through here and go down and turn on as well. The green basically turns on or, or is connected directly to uh, the green on connector one. However, we also want the green when you see down here, we want to do the proceed slowly. So since we want that one as well, we need to uh, connect that through a diode uh, to uh, the green on connector two down here, such that the yellow will not run up and also light up when we turn on the green. And then finally, the uh, white uh, wire will actually go into the red on connector two, such that we can uh, show that uh, switching is allowed at the same time as the uh, left red uh, is on. So you can see that all on the signal here, we want left red on and we want the white on. So we want the left red connected uh, as well. So now let's go see how that looks. Here we have the uh, home exit signal uh, connected up. Uh, now um, this is uh, only uh, temporary connected. As you can see, there's a lot of wire sticking out here and there. Uh, so uh, if you do this, uh, don't forget to uh, solder appropriately and uh, insulate appropriately. Sooner or later, by Murphy's Law, something will uh, short circuit. But I only added it temporary here. Okay, and what have we done? Again, the black wire goes into the red from the, D, uh, uh, from the uh, DC power supply I'm using here. And then I have the black that goes through the yellow wires into the center of these connectors here. Now it gets a little difficult to see. Uh, but what actually you have over here is the red wire and that's the red to the right that goes directly into the uh, red on uh, connector three. Um, and actually what we also want red, we want the other red wire also to go into uh, red on the connector three. However, it goes through a diode uh, into go into the red. Look at the red wire here, it also comes here, and then it might be hard to see, but it also goes over here to the red on connector four, because it also needs to be there uh, in connection with the switching. Uh, the green wire, you see, I kind of bend up here a little. Uh, the green wire goes directly into the uh, green on uh, connector three, and then actually through a diode here, over to so it can help showing a proceed show slowly over on the green on connector four. And then we got the yellow that goes directly into green on connector four. And we got the white uh, into the uh, red on connector four. Now I know it's uh, actually a little hard probably to see on the video what goes where, but I have actually connected uh, exactly uh, like the drawing uh, before. So now let's try it out. So we got the signal here. Uh, let me take it out of stop mode. And as you can see, when it goes out of stop mode here, I got the true reds on, which fits with its uh, red on connector three, you see down here, that's uh, connected. So let's try and put it on green. You see the signal goes on green. It went on a uh, tree green down there. Let's uh, on the CS3 put it on uh, for the switching and you can see now it's the two whites and the red that's on. You can also see it's connector four red and let's uh, put it in the proceed slowly and you can see it's the red and the green and you can see down here it's connector four. Okay, let me just move this a little closer if I can just so you can see it. So you see red here actually goes in and I basically just uh, at the end of the red wire connect uh, uh, soldered uh, two diodes on. So it goes uh, both uh, to uh, support uh, standard red, but also to support uh, the switching. And then uh, we have the green. You see it kind of comes in here. It goes directly into the green here. So green, tree green. And it goes through the diode over to support the proceed slowly. Everything works. Yippee! If we uh, look at the distance signal, how do we connect that? So that's the Fiesman uh, 4010. Um, it has uh, two yellow wires and uh, two green wires. The two yellow wires will light uh, the yellow uh, on the um, 
uh, on the signal. So there's one for the top and for the bottom yellow. And then there's two greens and each of those is for the top and the green uh, uh, lights on the signal. Notice I switched here top button, bottom top. That's mostly to make it look a little nicer when I'm drawing the wires over here. So uh, we basically just the top uh, red one uh, needs to only go on when it's uh, uh, red is chosen, so it goes on the red on connector one. The bottom one needs to go on both when red is chosen, but also when uh, it's in prepared uh, to proceed slowly. So that's uh, connector two green. So it also needs to be connected there. There's a diode up here preventing that uh, when it, the yellow is turned on, then the, it's only the uh, bottom one turned on and not the top, so the it, power can run that way. And there's a diode uh, protecting the other way, such that the green won't turn on when the red is on. In the same fashion, we have the greens here. So the bottom green uh, only turns on uh, when we are to, uh, at prepare to proceed, uh, which is the green on connector one, and the top one, will uh, also turn on uh, when we are into prepare to uh, proceed slowly. So in this case, there is a diode here protecting it from the other green so it won't turn on. And then there's a diode here uh, preventing that the red up here will not turn on as well. So turn on as well uh, when the... Uh, when the green on connector one is there. So remember the entire configuration we want here is prepare slowly. We want the green at the top to turn on and the uh, yellow at the bottom. Now you see um, here on my trackboard, I got my two signals. So the S9, the home entry signal and the S11, the home exit signal. Now uh, let's go into the edit, edit article list because what I wanna do now is um, Remember, I want to connect the home distance signal uh, to uh, connector 1 and 2, uh, which in reality is here where S9 is now. So what we basically just need to do is we go down and choose the light signals again. And then we can choose over here. We got the distance signal again in the scale edition. So I'm going to choose this one. So when I do this, you see uh, the icon up here changes. And then actually here at the bottom, as you can see, there's an extra entry now, which says home signal, and it says no signal now. So here I can connect the distance signal to any signal I want. And in this case, I want to connect it to the S11, which is in essence is the exit signal that's on the connector three and four. All right. So that actually means now when I got my signals here, oh, you saw it just updated and corrected itself, the S9, so now it's a distant signal. So now I can click on the uh, home exit signal, I can set it to green, and you can see it uh, changes. I can set it to proceed slowly, and you can see the distant signal changes as well, and I can set it also to the uh, uh, stop, but switching is allowed, and it changes. So in this way, you can basically change the uh, distance signal accordingly. So here we see the uh, home exit signal, which is still connected up to uh, connector three and four. And now I connected the distance signal up to uh, connector one and two. As you can see, I have additional uh, yellow wires here that goes over to the uh, black on the DC. Now remember, you don't need to go all the way back to the power supply. You could also just connect these uh, sender ones here if you like to. That is, if you're truly using the same power on all connectors. Remember the benefit of the M84 is I could have different powers on each connector. Um, in addition to that, I have connected here, so on the uh, one red, you see I connected a yellow, and then I actually connected the other yellow here through, and it goes, splits here in a diode, it goes over and supports the run red, and then it goes over and supports the uh, two green. I have the green here connected into the one green, and then I have a green up here that's uh, connected through uh, two diodes, one to uh, one green and the other one to two green. It, I know it's uh, hard to see here, uh, but I've connected it up exactly as the diagram I showed before. 
And remember, this is not necessarily a good example. If this was a permanent layout, you left it like this. You got exposed wires, uh, insulate these. Uh, you got basically a wire mess that nothing is really clearly uh, connected or illustrated here with anything. However, it's temporary just to show it. So now we uh, go out of stop mode and you can see here if we look down at the uh, uh, M84, you see connector 3 is red, connector 1 is red, so they're both red here. Remember, this may or may not be the case uh, if you just started it up, so you might have to shift the signal. And remember, I connected the uh, distant signal inside the CS3, so it actually points here to the uh, home signal or home exit signal. So now I'm going to change it. Uh, let me just change it to green. And you see two things happened over here on the M84. Uh, I got a green on three and I got a green on one. And now you can see that actually means the home exit is green, but the distant also shows green. Now let's uh, change it to uh, proceed slowly or the yellow as many call it. And you can see the home exit is green yellow and the distance is green yellow as well. And you see down here it's connector 4 green and it's connector 2 green. Now we only have uh, one setting left and that's changing it uh, to the um, stop and uh, shifting is allowed. So you see uh, on the home exit I get the two whites and only one of my red, and on the uh, distance I get two red. Now, to be quite honest, I haven't seen documented anywhere what the distance signal should be, but this is just what comes out of the box with the CS3, so I presume that is correct. And you see down here, on connector 4, I got the red, and on connector um, uh, 1, I got the red. And that's actually not me that chose this. This is actually the central station tree. The only thing I've done is connect the distant uh, signal as one would normally do. And it's actually the CS3 that makes sure that these two are connected. Now we saw that uh, we used the CS3 to actually uh, connect the distant signal to the home entry signal. But um, couldn't we just uh, connect both the home entry and the distant to the same uh, connectors? Uh, this would uh, give us uh, two advantages. It would work with the mobile station too. Uh, but it would also mean that uh, I would only use uh, half as many uh, connectors uh, on the uh, M84, even when I do it uh, with the CS3. Now the... Uh, penalty, so to speak, or the cost of uh, connecting both uh, the home entry and the distance signal to the same connector. So you see here, over here to the right, I have uh, connected uh, all the wires from both signals appropriately uh, to the connectors, uh, uh, connector 1 and connector 2 on the M84. However, you see uh, my wiring suddenly got uh, more complex I need more diodes and so on. Uh, and as you saw before in the videos, it was actually uh, uh, complex enough as it is. However, if you look at it, it is relatively simple. Now, I haven't uh, tried this one here where I combined the home entry and the distant uh, without the connector. Um, so uh, if somebody finds an error, please uh, let me know in the comments below. And if there is an error, I will pin it uh, as a comment uh, uh, in the uh, for the video as well. However, let me know if it works. In the same fashion, you can also connect the uh, home uh, exit and the distance signal uh, to one connector. And here you see now we get even more wires uh, because remember we have four aspects here, where the fourth being uh, the stop but uh, switching allowed. Uh, and um, as such, we also need uh, more. Uh, diodes as well. And uh, again here, I haven't tested it, so please let me know if uh, this actually works. I did uh, trace it through. I hope it is correct. But then again, you know, by Murphy's Law, I probably missed something. Wow, lots of wires. So um, ending up with an M84 connected to two signals, so in this case here the uh, home exit signal and the distance signal. Requires a lot of wires, 
requires some soldering, requires some diodes. Uh, the diodes are really not that expensive um, and they are also pretty sturdy. So uh, if you're careful when you're soldering, you'll be good. Um, please do not end up in a wire mess like this. I'm only showing this in this video uh, to actually uh, show, illustrate how uh, to connect uh, the uh, signals. If you need this as a permanent setup, if you end up with something like this underneath your layout, you will never figure it out again. So please be uh, careful. Uh, please do not have exposed wires and so on uh, like I have here. So it will require some finesse to actually make this work uh, on your layout. I uh, showed you uh, how to connect uh, the home entry, the home exit and the distance signals. I also uh, at the end showed how you could, instead of here where I'm using two, uh, two connectors, so connector one and two for the distance signal which is hanging here and connector three and four which is uh, the home exit signal here. You could actually combine all of these wires into uh, two connectors. Um, I have not tried it out myself, I just illustrated how it is. It would save you money because you would only have to use a half of the connectors, which also means you could connect another home signal to uh, the other side. Uh, so that will actually make it more useful. Uh, don't forget that I uh, connected here to the yellow wires and the black wires here uh, of the signals. What I connected was a DC power supply. Uh, if you follow the instructions, you can also connect an AC power supply or you can connect it directly to the track. Which basically means then when you have the M84, you can freely choose uh, between all of these uh, methods. Um, the other thing uh, maybe to consider is, is this cheaper than a smart signal? I would say yes. The smart signals are actually uh, pretty uh, expensive. Um, if you look at this, yes, the M84 is expensive. The signals are cheaper. But if you look at it uh, combined uh, with a smart signal, um, that is uh, definitely cheaper, this solution here. Uh, the other thing there is to consider is, it's not only Macklin that produces uh, decoders that will work with uh, signals. There are other manufacturers as well. Honestly, I do not have a lot of experience with these, but perhaps this is something I will look into in the future. Maybe one could even avoid uh, the uh, ugly mess of all the diodes and so on with some of the others. I don't know. Uh, the other thing that's worth considering is I did it here for two uh, Fiesman signals that are actually uh, very uh, close or very similar to the Merklin signals. Uh, but if you have signals from other countries, uh, Belgium, Holland, uh, Denmark, uh, Switzerland or something like that, if at least they got the three or four aspects that work in the same way, then you could connect them uh, to the M84 in the same way. Just uh, like I did in the beginning of the videos, I examined all the wires uh, from the uh, signals. Uh, examine those first and then figure out which one goes where. It might be a little of a puzzle, but it will actually uh, work out. I hope you enjoyed the, this video. Please give it a thumbs up and hit the like button. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel uh, if you enjoy it and enjoy your day.